We're going to be speaking with uh, Danny Buxton, who's uh, the managing director of Triple Zero Property Group. Um, he's going to be joining us really, really soon, I hope. Yep. I'm here. I can, I can hear you, but um, at this point, we can't see you, Danny. No problem. It's just coming on now. <clears throat> There How you doing, Terry? And Very good, Danny. Nice to see you. Um, and you and too. I, and, and thank you again for this uh, opportunity to come and be a part of this uh, great event. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, I know that um, you are uh, currently sitting in the Sunshine Coast. I'm not too far away from there myself. And I think we both know that this is um, a very, very dynamic economy at the moment. We could touch on that just very briefly uh, before we talk about more general things. But... Um, the economy of the Sunshine Coast is, is really doing extraordinary things and out of this coming quite a strong property market. Yeah, well, there's a lot of great things happening here on the coast, um, which is, I guess, underlined by a variety of, of factors. We've got great population growth. It's one of the strongest in the country. We're um, great infrastructure. We've got the, the new hospital precinct that's uh, now being uh, predominantly completed. Uh, it's one of the largest uh, hospital precincts in Australia, and uh, it's a brand new hospital, uh, which is obviously providing a lot of jobs and economy uh, into the economy. I guess Touch My Coast traditionally used to be a, uh, a tourism and construction uh, was was a big part of, of its economy, and and uh, then I guess during the, uh, the downturn of the economy, a lot of that construction left, and and Sunny Coast sat there. Not really knowing what to do for a little while, but then with with the advent of the hospital, uh, with the new uh, airport upgrades that are going on at the uh, Marucci Airport, uh, and as well as the uh, Sun Central, the new uh, the big new uh, CBD of, of Sunshine Coast, it's really I guess consolidating the coast, which has traditionally been lots of small towns, which is now yeah. becoming you know a big regional city in its own right. Yeah. So, Danny, based on the Sunshine Coast, you're the <coughs> Managing Director of the Triple Zero Property Group. Could you just briefly tell us a little bit about what you actually do to assist property investors? Yeah, thanks, Terry. Look, we, we work with mum and dad investors, whether they are wanting to invest in their first, second or third property or, or even in, in assist them in the process of, of building their, their own home, whether it be their first home as a first home buyer or whether it be uh, building their second, third or, or their dream home. I guess we're very much like a, a building broker, so we just deal in, in new property, and that's where we specialise in. Um, I agree with a lot of the comments of, of your previous uh, participants in, in the things that they talked about, about making sure that you've got good information before buying a property, and, and that's certainly when building, there can be a lot of, uh, I guess, misinformation that can be presented or, or unknowns, and, and the building process can be very stressful, so we're there to, I guess, mitigate risk through that process, ensuring our clients are getting uh, good value in that purchase price, uh, whether it be negotiating through uh, developers or with the builders to, to make sure that uh, they have that certainty that they know that they're getting what they expect to be getting at the price that they, they're they uh, within their affordability and the price they expect. Uh, we probably, but we also too do a lot of work with police emergency services and uh, uh, within the health industry as well. I know there's always um, quite a bit of debate about the merits of, of new versus established. Um, in simple terms, what do you see as the, as the benefits of, of a new build as opposed to buying an established property? Again, it comes down to what is it that you're, you're buying a property for. So uh, obviously when people are wanting to build their own home and they don't want to live in, they, they have a design that they want to have and they go through that process. I guess for investors, uh, we... Uh, see great benefit from from a negative gearing perspective. Uh, we work very closely with the guys from Washington Brown. I know you've got um, Peter speaking a bit later, and those benefits can really add through understanding negative gearing and, and being able to depreciate uh, the asset. Uh, you're able to um, for the building. You've got that depreciation schedule in place. It gives you some neutral or positive cash flow in the property. So it really comes down to managing that cash flow. Um, we, we tend to see as good rents, uh, and certainly higher rents with new properties, where we're traditionally seeing around about that 5% yield across the board with, with just uh, a, a new property, whereas an older property is around that 4%. And then obviously factoring the depreciation side of things as well. 
uh, gives and then that additional cash flow. Yeah. One of the things I particularly wanted to touch on with you, Danny, is that I know you're, mm. you're developing increasingly a specialty in um, uh, specialty type housing, um, specifically a housing that's built uh, specifically for people with disabilities. And um, yeah. there are many benefits uh, for investors in considering that type of investment. Yeah, look, um, over the last 18 months, we've been really investigating and looking at uh, what we call SDA, Special Disability Accommodation, uh, which is, oh, I guess, well, uh, which is put in place by the NDIS. So the NDIS is a National Disability Insurance Scheme. It's designed by the Australian Government to, I guess, assist participants with independent living and getting participants into more appropriate living um, arrangements. There is a massive need um, uh, in this space where, I guess, appropriate housing for, for those in need. Uh, and so the government has really been, there's been a big push uh, in, in this sector and, and the federal government's committed 700 million Australian dollars uh, funding every year for the next 20 years towards uh, providing, uh, I guess, uh, support for uh, investors or for the participants towards their housing. And so there's an opportunity there for what we call ethical investing for clients to invest uh, into a property or build a property that's designed specifically for uh, someone in need. There are different levels of need, and we tend to work in that high level support area. That's where we see there's the greatest need at the moment. Um, the government's made a commitment that uh, by June 20, um, well, yeah, 20th of June, uh, sorry, June 2020, that they would like to see every uh, person under the age of 45 out, out of uh, inappropriate accommodation, particularly in that um, uh, nursing homes and in aged care facilities where they, they're just really not being given the, the assistance and the care that they really need. And then by, by 2025, they'd like to see uh, people under the age of 65 out of that inappropriate accommodation. So there's a massive need. Uh, there's 20 odd thousand people who uh, needing this accommodation, uh, but there is a massive undersupply of housing. Yeah. But there's very strict, very strict requirements uh, and and compliance that needs to go around this, this process. It just seems to me that this um, there's a nice blend here that's available to people. It's it's a form of ethical investment. You yeah. this type of investment, you're actually providing something that has has a very real need for people in need. But also, there's a win, a big win for the property <coughs> investors because of the government subsidies. The uh, rental yields tend to be well above average. Yeah. Well, the I guess the the initiative is to provide substantial rental assistance to compensate SDA investors who, what we say, ethically and specifically invest in the compliant homes. Um, I guess the uh, the the benefit for, for our clients and those who are going down this path is, is there's a sense of, look, I'm making a difference to some of the most vulnerable people in our society. And when you meet with um, uh, these participants and their family, their families, um, they come up and they want to give you a hug. You know, they're in tears. They don't really believe this is actually happening. Uh, many of these are, uh, are families who have been caring for a, a, a loved one for for a significant period of time with, with very inappropriate care or they're at home and tr trying to provide those needs. And now we're actually able to provide housing that's there, that's, that's really suited to their needs. The government has really, I guess, put uh, there's, there's different um, levels of funding uh, that you receive depending on the type of house that you go. So for us, as I said, we're, we're focusing on really that high physical support, but the cost of that property and to build that property is quite significant. And the government recognises that. And so therefore they provide a very good funding uh, for that. So for example, if we were to build a, a three bedroom house with carers accommodation or carer support, so like a four bedroom house um, that, that meets these requirements um, here on the Sunshine Coast, for example, um, there's uh, what we call, uh, you got your, your reasonable rent contribution, which is 25% of their um, of their disability pension, which then goes towards that, which must, is required to do that. Then there is uh, the funding from the SDA funding, which has a location factor applied to that. So 
here on the Sunshine Coast, uh, if we were to do that and build a house with three participants in that, uh, there would be an annual rental income paid by the government uh, to the, um, the investor at, uh, as a gross, uh, gross rent of $130,000 a year. Um, so if it was two participants, rental, then it's about ninety odd thousand dollars. Rental yield, in terms of the rental yield, what would that translate into? Gross would be uh, nearly seventeen and a half percent, and if we two participants, it's around about twelve and a half percent. So there are quite quite amazing rental yields available for this kind of um, property mm. investment. But I think people need to also be aware that it's very very important that they go through the right channels and get it right Absolutely. because if you you think you know what you're doing and you build something that doesn't meet the criteria, it's not going to be acceptable to um, the, the participants that you think you're building it for. Absolutely. And I think that's the big thing. And, and this is why it's taken us so long to, to really work out the best way forward. For us, it's really important um, that, number one, that you're, you're working with the right team of people around you. There are risks involved in that, and obviously anyone who wants some more information, we've done up a document which outlines those risks and, and probably gives a bit more information uh, about the program and, and the processes of how it works. But um, there have been situations where people have built a house trying to follow the guidelines. Uh, and then they think, we've, I've now built a house, I'm now but a house that's right for SDA, but they haven't gone through the proper compliance process in ensuring that it meets all the regulatory requirements in, in every avenue. And then you've also got to have a special disability provider, SDA provider, who's then overseeing that process. Just because you have a compliant house doesn't mean that you're going to get the money from the government. You actually need participants. And so you've got to find the right people around from... Uh, the right builder who who's who understands what they're doing through to uh, the right provider uh, through to uh, working with your um, uh, care providers as well which is then overseeing the seals that are looking after the uh, the participants um, but then just the compliance in that process we don't believe it's right for uh, and there are some people who are going down this path where they're building and they go, look, you as the investor can become the SDA provider. But the compliance and regulatory uh, stuff that goes behind that is quite big and, and significant. The government's put that in place for a reason because we are dealing with people who are very vulnerable. Uh, who, that, this, this form of investment, probably more so than any other, is one where you really do need to get on board with some expert special advice to make sure you're doing it the right way. Yeah. And look, one of the other issues too is, is the funding side of things and, and trying to be able to understand uh, from a lending perspective. The banks are still trying to get their head around this and work through that. So, for example, we just had a client who recently did a property for $750,000. Uh, we're very comfortable with the, the it's, everything ticks all the boxes. We, we've already got uh, already a lot of interest with tenants. Um, but, uh, you know, from a traditional valuation perspective, uh, the bank would value that property, even though it's a 750 purchase, because they're looking at it as a, an alternate use, as a normal house. You know, the valuation will then come quite short because of all the additional things that are going into that house. You know, it might cost okay. $500,000 to build that house. Then an 80% LVR of, an, of a 600000 valuation, they'll do a 480 lend on a 750. So there's a, nearly a $300,000 shortfall. But interestingly enough, some of the banks are now looking at this, well, what about if we look at it from a commercial perspective? Uh, so they're then looking at, if we look at the rent, so let's say the net rent is $100,000 a year, with a 9% market cap, um, we value at 1.11 mil, even though we're only buying it for 750, and they'll do a 50% LVR on that. So you're looking at around about a $550,000 lend, uh, where you probably only need around about $200,000. Uh, okay. So it's there some of the challenges that exist uh, some of the other challenges, and I guess part of why the banks are taking, uh, I guess, a bit of a conservative view is what happens if you want to sell the property? Who's going to buy the property? Um, and so you just need to, to work through those things and have a proper plan in place, which we do and we work through our clients with. Okay. Well, thank you, Danny, for that. Um, I'm sure there'll be lots of people viewing tonight who'd be interested in that um, form of investment, firstly from the ethical viewpoint, but also yeah. from the viewpoint of the, uh, the substantial rental yields that are available on that kind of specialty property. If you'd like to find out more about that and like to contact uh, Danny Buxton from Triple Zero, his contact details are there on the screen now. Please follow up. And um, if you've got any questions about 
that uh, special informal property or about other types of new builds. Danny Buxton, thanks for your contribution tonight. And, thanks, Terry. Uh, a lot of information in a very short period of time. But look, anyone who wants to sit down and have a chat, we're more than happy to get on a Zoom or have the conversation with them. So thank you. Okay. And if they want more information, just shoot us an email and uh, we'll send all that information through. Thanks again, Danny. Thank you, Terry. Okay.